imagine, as one scholar suggested, flying over the ruins of an ancient Roman city. Public buildings that were made by uh, donors, charitable bequests, would include um, basilicas. Now, the word basilica, a lot of times we think of a big church, but that was actually a rectangular, long Roman building with double columns that would serve government and public. Um, so we would see theaters, basilicas, and baths. In fact, I mean, it's powerful to me because I was just in Ephesus this summer and some of the and, and theaters in Ephesus had two theaters, a smaller theater and a big theater. And, uh, and so you, you could imagine, you might think as you went over the ruins that there, there were more uh, charitable, these public buildings that were given charitably covered more ground than ac actually domestic housing. Now imagine flying over uh, a large medieval city. In that, if you did that, you would see the roofs of convents, hospices, orphanages, and soup kitchens. Charitable giving for the poor in the medieval city that accompanied the expansion of the Christian church were significant. It was a huge footprint in the medieval cities. Now the contrast between the Greco-Roman cities and the uh, medieval cities, wherever the church started to emerge, couldn't be greater. In Roman society, uh, giving generously or uh, giving charity, it wasn't considered one to be religious, and the upper classes really didn't care about the social, the lower classes. It wasn't their concern, nor was the religion. Did they really think the Greek gods really weren't concerned about the poor? So their bequests went for public buildings, like I said, like the um, the baths, the basilica, theaters. Um, but wherever the church started, wherever the church got planted, very soon you would see homes for the elderly, you'd see hospitals, and you'd see orphanages. And in fact, in both Greek and Latin, they had to invent words be to, for these charitable institutions. They didn't even have words for these in the Greco-Roman world. And so it was, it was a huge contrast. As an illustration, there is the emperor Julian, who was called the apostate. Julian was uh, born in 329, and he died in 379. And Julian was raised in a, a Christian, and at the age of six, the emperor, Constantius, killed his father and his, uh, many of his family members, and so he rejected Christianity. And he ended up becoming emperor for about three years. Uh, I think it was 363 to 366, something like that. And so he, he rejected Christianity, and he wanted to revive the Greco-Roman gods. And so there's an interesting letter that he wrote. So in it's a, kind of like a county or an area in a Turkey, he wrote a letter to one of the pagan priests basically giving instructions about all this, all the supplies that he had gathered that he wanted to be distributed to, distributed to the poor. He says this. Um, One-fifth of this, one-fifth of the stores that he had allotted, uh, be used for the poor who serve the priests, and the remainder be distributed to us by us to strangers and beggars. For it is disgraceful that when no Jew ever has to beg, and the impious Galileans, that would be Christians, not only support their own poor, but ours as well, all men see that our people lack aid from us. Now imagine that. Imagine the reputation both the Jews and the Christians had in the Roman world in terms of taking care of the poor, and that's one of the reasons 
uh, scholars believe that the church expanded, exploded so much was be also because when there were uh, diseases and the Romans, the wealthy, would leave, they even leave their own family, it was Christians who would stay behind and take care of those that were left behind, even, uh, and many of them died doing that. So, so the contrast between uh, the Greco-Roman world and the idea of charitable giving and as the church emerged in the world and began to expand couldn't have been greater. The plight of the poor was not seen to be a major concern of the Greco-Roman gods. And so there really weren't institutions, charitable institutions, like orphanages and hospitals and soup kitchens and that sort of thing. And so, so, the, so the impact is, is, is very powerful. And after, uh, after that, uh, there was a very, there was a very well-known theologian named St. Basil the Great. He was really a very formidable um, theologian and, and other theologians as well. So that they talked about charity and giving and, they, and giving generously and giving frequently. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to think a little bit about this phenomenon of charitable giving, of really giving to the poor and how important a place that plays in the Christian faith and how that might impact and influence ourselves on this Heifer Sunday and also as we begin our stewardship season. There is a, uh, there's a midrash on an Old Testament text. Now, a midrash in Judaism is like a commentary, okay? And there's uh, a midrash on, a, comment on uh, a text in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7, which reads this way. Let me just see if I can find it. Now, if there are some poor persons among you, say one of your fellow Israelites in one of your cities in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Don't be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your poor fellow Israelite. So that's the text, okay? And this is the Midrash. Rabbi Gamaliel is approached by a Roman citizen who questions the rationality of his holy book. Can it be true, this person asks, quoting Deuteronomy 15.7, and you to give to the poor without a moment's hesitation? Someone who conducted his affairs in this fashion out of money within days and in need of assistance himself. Rabbi Gamaliel responds, if a man appeared out of nowhere and asked you for money, would you give it to him? He replied, no. But what if he bought, brought you a deposit? He replied, of course. Okay you a commoner to co-sign the loan? He replied, no. But what if the governor signed? He replied, by all means. Well then, isn't the scriptural commandment logical? If you will issue the loan when the governor co-signs, how much more willing should you be when he who spoke and made the world agrees to co-sign? For scripture says, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Now that last sentence, I hope you recognize from the Old Testament lesson, because he's quoting Proverbs 19.17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Now theologian Gary Anderson writes, it would be difficult to exaggerate how important this verse is in both Judaism and Christianity. Among early Christian writers, the saying became one of the most cited uh, sources in support of charitable giving. And it turns out, again, as he mentioned, uh, many, many have, uh, many Christian leaders talked about this. St. Basil the Great, who I just mentioned, writes this. He writes that when assisting the poor, one both offers a gift and issues a loan. It is a gift because of the expectation of no repayment, but a loan because of the great gift of the master who pays in his place. 
he goes on to say, give, give the money since it's lying idle without weighing it down with additional charges, and it will be good for both of you. There will be for you, the donor, the assurance of the money's safety because of God's custody. For the poor who receive it, there is the advantage of its use. And if you are seeking additional payment, be satisfied with that from the Lord. He himself will pay the interest for the poor. Expect kindly acts from him who is truly kind. As I've been reading this book on charity, I've never thought in this, I've never thought of giving in quite this way. That when we give, it's actually a loan to God. And since we have so many financial people in this church, I thought this would be a very interesting topic. Have you ever thought that when, when we give, when we're generous or giving, we're actually loaning to God, and God is the co-signer on the loan? It's God, then, who blesses, and in this sense of uh, loaning to God, there was this sense that we are then st there is a treasury in heaven. Helping the poor is a loan to God that funds the treasury in heaven. Remember in the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain, one of the readings of which was today, Jesus says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt and thieves do not break and steal. And so Jesus, this was an idea of Judaism and Second Temple Judaism, which Jesus picked up. And so there is a very real way in which when we give generously, when we're aiding the poor, we're really loaning to God. And so we don't have to worry about if the poor will repay us, so to speak. It's the money, the money is going to God, and he's going to use it. And he will, in a way, we store up those acts of charity in the treasury of heaven. I've been thinking about this a lot. I, I, I like the idea that when we're giving, it's really a loan to God. God is the co-signer. We don't have to worry about if the poor can pay us back. Because it's God who is taking the loan. And we are then thereby storing up these, uh, these good gifts in God's treasury in heaven, in heaven being in God's space. Now, let me, let me make this in, uh, talk about this in concrete way. So today we have Heifer Sunday, and today we kick off our um, stewardship campaign, our focus on the sixth mark of discipleship, giving generously. Our giving to the poor really has an impact. I mean, I haven't seen gifts that Heifer has given, but I've been in Uganda where we have sponsored children, and we have paid for gifts for animals that the families receive. It's not a minor detail. Today, we, we give, it's, it's kind of when we think of the animals that, that we're going to be donating. But let me tell you, it makes a huge life and death, uh, and death difference in terms of the gifts we give and how it impacts people. When uh, I've been able, Brenda is the, is the uh, sponsor child that Beth and I have been sponsoring since 2009. And over that time, we have paid to get, uh, give them different animals. And when we go, we can see them, and we can see the goats. And we can see the chickens, and we can see some of the other animals. And not, it, it's like getting an incredible loan. It's like we're not doing something cute or something nice. It's like you're really struggling, and suddenly you have this incredible loan that you can then use to make your life better. And it has such a powerful impact. And when you see the pictures and when you actually visit the families, I mean, her family is doing so much better than it was uh, when they lived in that uh, internal displacement persons camp when we first met them in 2009, and part of it has been the animals. And not only does it provide income from them, it gives them a sense of pride, and the thing I love about Heifer, too, is that part of the deal is you then have to share that when that animal has offspring, you share that with someone else. So you are... Um, not only feeling good yourself, 
and finding a means to, uh, to, raise, to rise out of poverty, and so you have a sense of uh, dignity, you're also helping someone else and help someone else to rise out of poverty, and then you're cementing the bonds between those families. So when we give, when we purchase these animals, it's very powerful. It's a powerful financial enhancement for these families. I like thinking it now that actually it's God's kind of in the, doing the transaction. It's, it's just, you know, it's a loan to God, and God's going to be doing all of, all of this stuff. And when you think about our church, our church this past year has given about $130,000 in terms of distributing, in terms of missions. And a large part of the monies that we distribute are to help go to ministries that deal with the homeless and the poor. It's one of the things we've discovered this church has a real heart for ministering to the homeless and to the poor. It's a very, very powerful ministry. And so this morning, I would like to put forth a few challenges. Okay, the first challenge is take a three by five card and write down Proverbs 19:17 on it. Those who are kind to the poor lend to the Lord and will be repaid in full. It's really a great little verse. And meditate on that. Meditate on that proverb. It should have we should raise it up to have a, a higher visibility like it did in the early church than it is now. He was kind to the poor, um, lends to the Lord, and is repaid in full. So the second challenge is this. Since the theme of our stewardship campaign is changing more lives, what I would like to challenge you to do is when we go back into the fellowship, Paul, and you're going to give, if you were planning on giving $20, I want to challenge you to give $40. If you were going to give, spend $40 for an animal, <coughs> I want to challenge you to give $80. And if you were going to give $100, give $200, right? Because if you give more, we will have more of an impact. And especially the way Heifer works, it just ripples out. It ripples out into the communities that we will be giving these animals. How good, how wonderful is that? How much do you think that pleases God that we can be more generous to have a greater impact on the lives of so many who receive this? It gives them a sense of value and dignity and hope. And then they will pass on the offspring and it will be continuing to be passed on to help raise people out of poverty. And the third challenge is we uh, enter into the stewardship season for you to prayerfully really, uh, take time to pray in terms of your own giving. Stewardship includes everything in giving our time. There are many who give great deals of time. Uh, giving our talents and sharing our talents. That's all part of stewardship. In this particular year, part of the season, we also focus on giving generously in terms of money. But as a church, I would love for us to be able to have a greater impact. I'd love for us to be able to spend $200,000 doing God's work in the world, uh, helping people to raise out of poverty, sharing the good news of Jesus. And so my prayer is that all of us will take this seriously and that we will believe in our hearts of heart that those who are kind to the poor lend to the Lord and are repaid in full. Amen.